Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. The environment in today's Congress can seem rough and tumble, with members exchanging words in the chamber and out in public, but it pales in comparison to that of the early 19th century. Here are just a couple quick examples. In 1836, future President Franklin Pierce, Representative Edward Hannigan, a Democrat from Indiana, and Representative Henry Wise, a Whig from Virginia, were drunk at a theater when Hannigan got in a fight and pulled a gun, resulting in an incident that almost led to a duel. In 1840, Representative Bailey Payton, a Whig from Tennessee, came to blows with Reuben Whitney, a bank lobbyist. Both men rushed each other in the House of Representatives, hands on their guns, but were stopped by cooler heads. In 1845, Representative John Dawson, a Democrat from Louisiana, stood up during a speech by Representative Joshua Giddings, a Whig from Ohio, pulled a pistol, cocked the hammer, and said that he'd kill Giddings. Immediately, a number of other representatives rushed to the sides of both men, most of all whom were armed. A tense standoff ensued before all parties eventually sat back down. While these accounts and their frequency are shocking, they pale in comparison to the story of two representatives who were actually driven to participating in a duel, resulting in the death of a sitting member of Congress at the hands of another fellow member. Representative Jonathan Silly, born in Maine in 1802, was a college-educated man. He studied law, passed the bar, practiced law, served as the editor for a local paper, and was a member and speaker in the Maine House of Representatives, and was elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1837. Representative William Graves, born in Kentucky in 1805, followed a similar path. He too went to college, studied law, passed the bar, practiced law, and served as a member of the Kentucky House of Representatives. He was elected to the United States House in 1835. Ironically, the two representatives had no issue with one another when the whole matter began. Instead, it all began when Silly openly questioned the validity of an article that accused a fellow congressman of corruption. This angered James Watson Webb, the publisher of the paper that ran the article, so he had Graves act as a messenger to deliver a note to Silly. When Silly refused to accept Webb's note, Graves took this to be an affront on his own character and honor. Even as tension built, Silly commented to a fellow representative that, quote, Mr. Graves and myself are not enemies. I have never had difficulty with him. Nonetheless, Silly's friend Franklin Pierce, the future president, urged him to start carrying a pistol, just in case Graves launched a surprise attack. It now became a personal matter between Graves and Silly. Graves initiated the challenge for the duel, so it was up to Silly to choose the type of weapon to be used. Knowing that Graves was a good shot with a pistol, he suggested that they use rifles instead. Delegate George Jones of the Wisconsin Territory and Representative Henry Wise of Virginia acted as the duelers seconds, arranging the specifics of the proceedings as according to the Code Duelo. The District of Columbia was not fit for a duel, so the men had to travel to nearby Bladensburg, Maryland to settle their score. Three carriages arrived at the dueling ground, bringing a total of 10 congressmen to the site on February 24, 1838. The two seconds teamed up to measure out the duel's range. In an attempt to prevent bloodshed, the men took large steps. This put the distance between Silly and Graves at approximately 92 yards, a good deal more than the required 80 yards. Graves' weapon was a 44 caliber percussion rifle made by Henry Derringer of Philadelphia with a full stock made of maple, a 45 inch octagonal barrel, and brass hardware. Silly's weapon was a 38 caliber percussion rifle made by Tryon of Philadelphia. In addition to the smaller caliber, it also had a shorter barrel length of 35 and a half inches. This rifle was accented with silver hardware. Both duelers were relatively poor shots. On the first exchange, Silly fired before he had even gotten the gun to his shoulder. Graves fired a named shot a second later and missed. As was customary, the seconds, Wise and Jones, conferred in the middle for an astounding 20 minutes before reaching their conclusion. Satisfaction had not been met, so the rifles were reloaded. 
On the second shot, it was Graves who fired too early, and Silly who aimed but still missed. A duel customarily only had two shots, but this situation had already proven to be anything but customary. So, the rifles were loaded for a third time as the two representatives prepared to fire yet again. This time, both men fired almost simultaneously. Silly's shot missed, but Graves' bullet severed Silly's abdominal aorta and he bled out in a matter of minutes. Upon hearing the news, Graves' second, Henry Wise, had tears in his eyes as he sent word back to Franklin Pierce in Washington, alerting him of his friend Silly's death. Representative Jonathan Silly was 35 years old and a freshman in the House, just eight days shy of completing his first year in office. He left behind a wife and three children. His funeral was attended by the President, Vice President, the Cabinet, and most all members of Congress. Notably absent were all of the Supreme Court justices who refused to attend a dueler's funeral. Even so, the funeral cortege stretched for half a mile on its way to the Congressional Cemetery. The House conducted an investigation into the duel and the specifics surrounding how it came to be that two congressmen gathered in a Maryland field to shoot at one another repeatedly. When the investigation concluded, a recommendation was made to censure Graves, Wise, and Jones, but the censure was not enforced. Congress eventually passed anti-dueling legislation, but it only prohibited such actions from actually taking place in the District of Columbia. Just as before, duelists could simply head to nearby Maryland to settle the score. William Graves was not renominated for his seat in 1840, so he went home to Kentucky and served again in the state's house. He died in 1848 at the age of 43. Today, the guns are housed in the National Firearms Collection at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. They're just two of almost 7,000 firearms in the collection, but they are the only two that can claim to have been used in the only duel to result in the death of a sitting member of Congress at the hands of another. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Also consider leaving a like and a comment. In the description below, you'll find links to various platforms where you can follow HCH, and I'd also be humbled if you'd consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.